Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you've uh, hope your day's starting off absolutely great. Uh, I've got a ton of stuff to do today, boy. The Preterist Pilgrim Weekend is coming up. I have, matter of fact, it's one week away from today. <clears throat> Needless to say, there there's a lot to be done. But I'm very, very excited. We're getting registrations in. And as I have mentioned to you, I got, I've got to tell you, my lessons, just my lessons, okay, uh, I am just so excited. One of my lessons is on the conversion of the Ethiopian eunuch as absolute total proof that the Messianic kingdom and the Messianic temple of God was under construction in the first century. This is so exciting. Old Testament prophecy predicted that at the time of the Messianic temple and in the temple, both Ethiopians and eunuchs would be included within the, quote, walls of God's temple. Hey, this is exciting stuff. Okay, we are discussing the question, must we have the gift of the Holy Spirit to understand the Scriptures? Been focusing on Acts chapter 2, 38 and 39, which of course when we just analyzed the text in the first place, Peter is talking to people who have already become convinced and convicted in their heart, not through any miraculous work on their heart, but through observation of the external miraculous gifts of the Spirit, in fulfillment of Joel chapter 2. But they ask, men and brethren, what shall we do? And they are told, repent and be baptized. Now watch this. Every one of you. So we have a, a generic, quote, universal command in, respond to, in response to the 3,000 who have asked, what shall we do? Every one of you are to repent and be baptized. Okay, now watch this. Four. The promise is to you. To you who? To the ones who repent and are baptized. But that's not where it ends. For the promise is to you and to your children. Now we've already demonstrated from Scripture that the little phrase or term, you and your children, is a one generational promise. This promise of the Holy Spirit does not extend beyond one generation generation. This is the promise of Joel. This is the promise of the Holy Spirit to be poured out before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Okay, now watch. We're leading up to this. <clears throat> the promise is to you and to your children, to all that are far off, we've already talked about that, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And someone says, oh, well, they're there you go. That's it. Because God calls everyone to the gospel. Therefore, everyone can receive the Holy Spirit. Well, I've already demonstrated this is a one generational thing. There's something very, very distinctive about the Greek word call here in Acts 2.39. Now, the normal word for the call of the gospel is kaleo, just simply kaleo. This is not the word used in Acts 2.39. The Holy Spirit used a very distinctive word, pros kaleo mai. <clears throat> pros kaleo mai, according to the lexicons, one of its specific definitions is to call to a task, to appoint, to designate. In other words, Peter said, every one of you are supposed to repent and be baptized, and among those who repent and are, and are baptized, God shall appoint as many as he chooses. This is not a blanket, universal promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me illustrate this. <clears throat> this word, proskaleomai, 
and its cognates appears a little over 30 times or around 30 times in the New Testament. And when you examine it, you will find that there might be a, a multitude present and Jesus would call out his apostles. Matthew chapter 10, for instance, Jesus called his apostles, here's a multitude, called his apostles to him and appointed them to go out and preach what we call the limited commission. Acts chapter 13, notice this. <clears throat> there was in the church, that was at Antioch, certain prophets and teachers, such as Barnabas and Simeon, that was called Niger and Lucius and Cyrene and Manaean, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Paul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Here is a great example of the distinctive meaning of proskaleomai. The other prophets were not called to this work. Now, they had been called to, re, to be prophets in that distinctive manner. So there is, they were called, proskaleomai, to receive the Holy Spirit to be prophets. Now, Paul and Barnabas are being selected, appointed, cut out, if you please, out of even that called group to another distinctive calling. This is how the word proskaleomai is being used in Acts chapter 2. Peter wasn't saying that the Holy Spirit would be given to the mass audience on Pentecost. <clears throat> he wasn't even saying that all 3,000 who obeyed the gospel that day would necessarily receive this gift of the Holy Spirit. He defines the term and he says, Every one of you be baptized, repent and be baptized, and the Holy Spirit will be given to as many as, which is within itself, by the way, in the New Testament, kind of a qualifying term, as many as <clears throat> the Lord our God shall appoint to be given this gift. So when we look at the language, <clears throat> of Acts 2, 38 and 39. It is very clear that it is not talking about, number one, unbelievers who have to have their heart and mind opened by the Spirit to understand the gospel. This gift of the Holy Spirit, as defined in Acts chapter 2, and by the way, this is going to be parallel to John 14 to 16 that we've already examined, and with 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is the promise of the miraculous gifts of the Spirit. And remember, Peter said, this is a one generational promise. So again, when we look at the language, when we look at the text, when we look at the terms, the phrases, <clears throat> pardon me, and the linguistics that are used. It's very clear that the promise of the Holy Spirit in Acts 2, 38 and 39 is not a promise to open the hearts of people to understand the Bible. It was a one generational gift of the miraculous gifts that would be given to those whom God distinctly, distinctively, <clears throat> and specially appointed to receive, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> to receive those gifts. Just in 1 Corinthians, just like 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the Lord gives the Spirit to whom He wills. See, it's perfect harmony. Well, thanks so much for joining me for this morning's morning musings. We've got more, but I hope you have an absolutely fantastic weekend. I've got tons of stuff to do to be getting ready for the Preterist Pilgrim Weekend. But don't forget, all of the material I've been presenting on the Holy Spirit can be found here and in my book. My book, Into All the World, Then Comes the End, has an extensive discussion 
of the last day's work of the Holy Spirit. This little book has tremendous information in it that I build upon in the book Into All the World and Comes the End. I'm giving you this book absolutely free. Go to my websites, www.eschatology.org or BibleProphecy.com. Send me an email. Say, Don, I want the little red book on Acts 2. <clears throat> Acts 2, 38 and 39. And order the book into all the world, then comes the end. And I'll pay your shipping. I'll refund the shipping on that order. Hey, thanks so much for all the private emails expressing, sometimes expressing disagreement, but asking honest, sincere, wonderful questions. You know, this dialogue, this study has been absolutely great, and we appreciate your interest. We appreciate your input. We appreciate your hearts. Thanks again for joining me. Hey, come to Preterist Pilgrim Weekend. If you can't come, sign up for the live stream video. Go to BibleProphecy.com under events. Follow the link. you you got to see the stuff in this year's Preterist Pilgrim Weekend. Oh, okay. Anyway, I'm done. You have a great day. We'll see you on the flip side.